this is a quick and easy guide on how to download and use Mario Builder. So I just Google Mario Builder, pretty much the first option on top, Yo-Yo Games. Click the download option, then click the download option again, and then save the file. Download takes a little long. The entire video is sped up to two times speed. Start typing in notepad a little. Can't read it anyway. So you run the file once it's downloaded, and it'll load Mario Builder itself. For me, whenever I use it, the screen flashes really quick. Just, uh, all black, and then it goes into Mario Builder. Right there. So I maximized it, but it only gets so big. So then you have to go into options, press enter on full screen. I was pressing X and wondering why it wasn't working, but you gotta press enter and it'll do that. Then you press enter on screen size. That's the controls. I don't know if you can read it, but it says X is to jump and is the substitute of the A button. Z is sprint and picking up items and it's also how you shoot fireballs and whatever your item is. Then it says enter is the second A button. You have to use it to toggle options. And that's pretty much all the controls you'll need. So you go to build, pick any of the files. I usually try not to do file one because it glitched up in one of the versions. I do advanced because simple doesn't let you do as much as advanced does. So you have to get points and then put them on the map. And without the points, you can't put anything anywhere. So what I show you here is that with scenery, you can split the points. And then that little blue box, that means it's blank but it still splits the points so in a sec I'll click test and you can see that the points are split but there's nothing there that way Mario can't just walk around like that once you split it up he has to go up and around the bonus room that I usually use is the little one with the spade on it because you don't actually have to build the level it's a preset level so all you have to do is go to it once you're in your actual published game and so I put down levels 1, 2, and then I put down two fortress, fortresses, and a ghost house. Then I put down the gate. The only way to get through the gate is by uh, beating the fortress that corresponds with its number. So I should have used gate 2. I'm not sure if I did. It kind of looks like gate 1. But with gate 2, you have to beat the second fortress, and then you can go through. That's uh, showing which music tracks you can pick. There's a lot. I usually like Super Mario World music, like Star World and Illusion Forest. Then you click on the little globe and you can name your world. I named it anything. You can also uh, edit the world story. So I just write down that Mario wants a tutorial on how to use Mario Builder. And then the other things you can do to it is edit the title screen. You can make it have words and everything. I didn't do that in this video though. Then once you open Level Manager, click New, make a level, and then edit it. So I just chose a little music track. Then I chose Luigi instead of Mario just because I can. Then with Simple Ground, you uh, got to click on it and then click on the screen, wherever you want to put it. Click one of the down arrows, either on your uh, keypad or over on the right side of the screen. It'll change what kind of Simple Land you're using. And like item blocks in Simple Land, if there's a little green box around it in the little menu bar at the bottom, it means you can double click it and see all the options. If it's like orange or brown or whatever it is, you got to scroll through it with arrow keys. Uh, so those are baddies, land one, that's like Goomba, Para, Goomba, Koopa, Para, Koopa, all the Koopas pretty much. There's like blue, gold, whole variety of them. Then, uh, this is simple ground. If you saw that little menu pop up, you press down, drag, and then you can, uh, make the ground however you want it. So, uh, each ground has six sprites to it, I guess. There's the top left corner, the top right corner, bottom left corner, bottom right corner. Oh, then there's also the sides, and then filling in the top and the bottom. And then there's the one in the middle. So basically, the sprite that you see in the middle is just one repetitive sprite copied over and over again. Those two are the switches that you, you find in Super Mario World, that if you click the switch, then all the little yellow blocks you can actually hit. That's one of the little talking blocks when you hit it, it talks. And if you take an item and you put it on a block, like how you see the little music block, I'm going to put a blue Yoshi item on it later. You put that right on it, and when you hit the block, the item will come out of it. 
So, when you don't have a mushroom, and you hit a fire flower block, or any block with a power up in it, a mushroom will come out. And then it, once you have the mushroom, you hit the other one, a fire flower will come out. That's just me showing you how uh, music blocks work. So then I just jump off the cliff and die. If you uh, click test, you have to click spawn point, and usually I just click one. Right there, that says one. Uh, you can change your spawn point when you add a spawn. When you click little Mario at the beginning, it tells you to select a spawn number. It doesn't have to be a number, it can be anything. Then those blocks right there are fire flower blocks. To break them, you have to use a fire flower. You might be able to use other flowers too, like ice and a little stone one. Then I make a little lava thing. You can see that uh, it's just going to be a little thing that looks like lava. And it's got the little skull boat on it eventually, where you jump on it and then it moves through at a gradual pace. Those are like those little dragon or Yoshi coins or whatever. You get five, you get a one-up. And then I put the blue Yoshi egg on it. If you guys played Super Mario World, uh, Star World 2, you'd know what the blue Yoshi is. Except in this game, you don't have to feed it anything. It just grows up by itself once you get out of the block. So that's just me building a tile piece. You can make them look kind of 3D. You can make one behind the other, which I'll do in a sec. I just have to finish this one. Yeah, because if you don't, you can overlap it and make the big one go in front, but I usually don't do that, so the, it looks like one's in front of the other and it works. But the thing is, they don't work as walls, they only work as, like, this floor to stand on. So, the only way to stand on them is to jump on top of them. If you try to walk into them, you'll walk right through them and fall. So then I get the blue Yoshi, you eat a Koopa, and then instead of holding down the jump button, you have to press it in this game. So I just pressed it a lot, and then I got over there. It doesn't look like Blue Yoshi needs to have the shell spit out. I think it can just fly over the level without you having to worry about it. Because when I tried doing the uh, holding down and then spitting out the shell, it just shot it. So I'm pretty sure that you'll never need to uh, renew the shell or whatever. So then I toy around with invisible blocks. I make uh, walls and then climbing and swimming. There's also harm which if you have a mushroom, you lose your mushroom. And there's kill, which just kills you instantly. They're kind of fun to play around with because you can't see them when you're actually playing it. So if you have like a fake finish line kind of thing, you can put some kill blocks in front of it so that the people can't actually get to it if they thought they found a new glitch or something. Uh, pressing enter while you're playing pauses the game and pressing spacebar lets you use your auxiliary item or whatever it's called at the top, top of the screen. I already lost mine though. So, right now I'm running on it in invisible blocks, even though it kind of looks like I'm running on the background back there. And then I'm just swimming and kill myself. Then I add some clouds. Uh, you can stand, if you have a stack of clouds going up, you can walk right through it, and you can stand on top of clouds. And you, I'm pretty sure if you're underneath it, you can jump on top of it. Then right here with the pipes, that's an in pipe. If you look at how it has arrows, if you stand on top of the one with arrows and press down, you'll go into it. If you have the little red box underneath it, then uh, once you can link it, I press link at the bottom of the screen, clicked one, then clicked uh, what level I wanted to link it to, which is still level one. And then after that, you uh, say which spawn point it is. When, I, when you put in a little blue box on the pipe, what that does is it asks you for another spawn point, so I put in two. Then, when you press test, if you type in two, you can spawn right at the pipe. It's good for testing levels if you just want to put in one of those right before a boss or something, if you're not sure if it'll work, and then just delete it on later. So, in the actual game, once I publish it, once you go into that pipe on the left, it'll actually bring you right to the pipe on the right. Uh, it doesn't let you do that in this, I'm not sure why, it's just because it's a test, I guess. Then I'll show you some power-ups. There was the Hammer Bro one, and then that's a Bowser one. With the Bowser one, if you sprint, uh, you go into your shell, and then just keep spinning, and you can kill all the enemies in your way. And you can also shoot fireballs. And then that's the green flag and the little finish line, and that's a red flag. I haven't uh, figured out how to use the red flag to make it actually go to a secret level yet, or anything like that, but hopefully I will in the future. There's probably going to be a video or two on YouTube somewhere. So the little save button in the bottom right corner is there. Then I'll show you a thunderstorm. It just makes rain and lightning. Uh, and then 
showing you the music tracks and I'll show you uh, some backgrounds. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Uh, I hope you guys use Mario Builder. It's pretty fun to use and experiment with. Uh, there's a lot more to it than what I showed you. This was just a basic guide. There's a lot more enemies in it. There's a lot more backgrounds and everything. Uh, you can put bosses in it and you can make uh, doors. To, like door one leads to the end of another door. And uh, making ghost houses with the booze in it is really fun. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, and I hope it helps.